Welcome to this new episode of Your Next Trade, episode number 20, called today Zero DTE Armageddon. We're going to be covering options, we're going to be covering the week, and we're going to be looking at technical analysis. And finally, we're going to be looking as well at the catalyst for the next few weeks. So what about Zero DTE, which stands for Zero Day to expirations and and now the many market participants are asking you know if we're going to see an armageddon due to those very short dated options so as we can see in these charts most of the options now uh, roughly between 40 and 50 percent of the options of on the s p are uh, will be expiring on the day what has been happening and that's something we have been covering over and over since 2017, so roughly around that time, so that will be here, uh, the market uh, through the um, CBOE has been introducing new options, so weekly options. So instead of having options that would be expiring only on Fridays or monthly, we had more and more options that were offered to uh, the different uh, market participants. And that has been created um, really a drive through options. So the market is more and more driven by options. So if you have been trading cash, the way I've been doing cash for the last uh, 20, 20 years, stocks, uh, now stocks have been more and more driven by options. And since 2017, as we can see here, numbers of options traded um, on the weekly, on the daily have been uh, growing. Uh, and the 2020, you remember the 2020 that many options in the US have been trading, uh, many traders in the US have been trading options. The reason is if you are a trader in the US, you don't have the same access uh, in terms of leverage that you would have in the other part of the world. So you will have one to two times leverage, two times leverage at best. So the, the best way to do uh, to get access to some leverage on the daily, on the weekly, will be to be using options. And this is why um, since 2020, there have been a rise in the use of options. Many brokers in the US will give you uh, uh, free access to options and the cost of options will be very low, uh, close to, to nothing or, or almost for, for some brokers. And as well, what we see from many uh, dodgy educators that have been switching from stocks, CFDs into uh, options because they know that this is the market for the US. So unfortunately, those 90% of the US traders that have been losing money have been now losing money even more quickly because they do only uh, options strategy. So this zero, zero debt to expiry, expiration, sorry, is it really a concern? Uh, so there has been some, some, some issues raised about, you know, how the market structure has been changing over the few years. Clearly, the market has been changing. What is very true as well is this is creating an imbalance in terms of the volatility, the volatility structure between the short term and the more long term. So if we look, for instance, at the VIX, which is the volatility for the S&P for the next 30 days, um, it has been quite distorted by those short term options. So if you have been trading those short term options, uh, let's say on a Monday, you trade the expiry on the day, what you will be doing is you will be bidding higher the volatility. And who is making a lot of money in that case? It's not the traders, it's not the retail traders. Mostly it's going to be two people. It's going to be the salespeople, which are going to be um, the brokers. And the second one, which is going to be the middlemen, the people who are doing the market making. So make no mistake, this is why we have seen over the last three, four, five years, names of Citadel and some other market makers really making a lot of money. So they are making first a lot of volume, 20 to 50% of all those options that have been trading. And because there is a bid offer, meaning that there is a, a spread between where you buy and when you'll be selling, they will be making money out of it. And as well as most of those traders, those retail traders and professionals will be overbidding the uh, the volatility, the price, um, they will be, make, be making money out of it. So imagine that instead of, of buy, buying uh, an option with uh, an implied volatility at 20%, because everyone is rushing for it, you'll be buying a call that is expiring on the Friday with a 35% implied volatility. What the market maker is, he will be very happy to sell it to you. And in the meantime, will be hedging them, uh, themselves through the cash. So unfortunately, 
through those strategy and through those rays of options, 40%, 50% of the daily volume that are expiring on the day, on the day after, what you're going to see is the citadel of this world are making a ton, the market makers, and the traders will be losing. So be very cautious about, you know, this zero DTE. In terms of structure and how we're going to see an Armageddon in the near future, as long as the volatility is, is, is still pretty high, that I don't think that is a concern. I think it is more about, you know, if the volatility is too low at one, at one stage, as we've seen, um, for instance, this week where it was on, on Thursday, where on the PPI, actually the straddle for the day, we are pricing a move of less than, uh, I think it was... 30 points and actually the S&P moved by 40 points or more. So if we have this kind of situation, if there is a lot of positioning for people that are undermining or thinking that the volatility will be lo lower and actually the volatility on the day is higher, meaning that really uh, uh, realized volatility is higher than implied volatility, then you can have an issue. But so far, um, I think that is that is not the case. So let's go back into what we usually do, which is the year-to-date asset performances looking at uh, in blue the stocks. So what is interesting is actually uh, Europe is still really uh, outperforming the rest of the of the world, if you think, if we compare what is comparable, the S and P with the uh, stocks 50 or the uh, the stock 600. So funny enough to th to think that uh, Europe is seen these days as a safe haven. Uh, so you can see these days that there are many stories about Europe is cheaper, that uh, Europe uh, there is no inflation in Europe, as if there was no inflation in Europe versus uh, versus the US. That luxury is the best place to be in the world, like the names of LVMH. Caring and, and Hermes, uh, which are making a lot of, of the French market, for instance, uh, will be good. So, as always, the market is, is always overextending those themes. Uh, for the time being, you know, six months ago uh, in, until September, October, uh, market participants were seeing, you know, Europe as a don't touch. So we went from um, Armageddon in Europe to now uh, everything is good and everything is clear in Europe. So pretty interesting, this uh, extreme positioning that has been happening in uh, Europe versus the rest of the world. Um, in terms of, of the, the dollar, dollar is flattish. So if we look at the euro dollar, we are back at 106.5 uh, versus the US dollar. In terms of risk uh, to the crypto world, um, we are 40 to 50 percent. Uh, there was a big week, as we're going to see uh, later, for the uh, for for the crypto. Um, gold uh, pretty pretty much flattish. WTI trading between, as we've seen before, 72 and 82 in this trading range. The compression is getting uh, uh, smaller and smaller. So we're going to have a, a big move um, soon. Copper up on the year due to China expectations and natural gas, both in the U.S. and in and in Europe. Uh, done quite a lot uh, due to uh, warm weather uh, on 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 both part of those world of the world. So what about the week to date asset performances? So interestingly, um, S and P flattish on the week, small down as we've seen as we covered last week. Uh, very often on the option expiry week, uh, the S and P is, is is struggling a bit. So that's um, flat flat to small down. Uh, again, Europe. Uh, has been outperforming. So Europe very, very strong, 1.4% uh, on the week. Uh, currencies flattish, crypto big move. So we had a big move on Thursday and, and, and Friday. Uh, there was a bit of, of, of giving back. So a lot of dodgy names in, in, in the stock market. Uh, cryptos are doing well. So you can see that there is a lot of, of risk on and extreme risk on on some part of the, of the market. WTI uh, week for, for the week. So let's let's go into the year-to-date industries performances where silver is down almost 10% now. Utilities, um, energy, so energy, which was the winner of 2022, as you remember, is now the loser. Uh, our other end of the spectrum, semiconductor. So semiconductor, uh, that will be something that will be um, really monitoring in the next few days, few weeks. Uh, it has been trading in a range. We're going to have the NVIDIA numbers coming soon. What about the week to date industry performance? You can see, so on the S&P, which is here, uh, uh, sorry, up. So uh, week on the week that is flattish, there has been a quite a div divergence between the winners and the losers. Um, so quite a extension between the two, uh, retail up, 
at the other end of the spectrum, energy, oil services down. If we look at the same on the, on the year to date sector performances, uh, telco, consumer discretionary, IT, so a lot of, of risk on Tesla that has been helping and, every, and anything that has been defensive, healthcare, utilities, energy, consumer staples really uh, struggling. Uh, but really for the week that has been uh, energy really the big loser. Uh, so that is really the most important part of this of this. Um, uh, follow up. What about the, um, the 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 rates, the ten versus the two and the ten years? So we've seen. So that is the last for the U.S. ten years at a three point eighty two percent up. Uh, almost eight bips, eight to ten bips on the week. Uh, so bonds have been uh, selling off uh, on the back of higher inflation, uh, CPI, PPI. Uh, so there is care of the second round of inflation, so something that we mentioned in the past. Uh, so the uh, inflation coming from manufacturing has been on, on the way down. Um, even inflation from commodities have been on the way down. Now the concern is on the uh, services inflation uh, through wages. Um, it's still pretty high and that could tell you that uh, if the economy is, is still doing fine the way it has been doing in the US, uh, that inflation could be very sticky, something that we have been mentioning over and over. The 10 versus the, the 2 uh, is still let down 80 bips. Uh, so in terms of uh, leading indicator, as we've seen in the past, it, it's a good one um, and, and something that we need to keep an eye. So what about the euro dollar? Um, in blue, this is for for this for as of yesterday, and, and in in uh, red, that is as of uh, last week. So euro dollar for the newcomers, this is about looking at what are the Fed expectations, uh, what are the Fed expectations in terms of their hiking cycle. So the hiking cycle, where we are for the time being, we are still expecting the Fed to be hiking rates until September. So September, we are sitting at 94.61, and in December. 94.88, so a bit of a cut, but if you look at the uh, soft market, actually SOFR market, we are more or less uh, expecting no cut from, from, from the Fed right now from the FOMC. Uh, so we're going to stay higher for longer. You can see that we have been moving from the uh, from the blue from the red to the blue uh, lower, meaning that we are expecting the, the Fed to be more hawkish. Um, that was explained, as I said, by the CPI and the PPI for the week with higher uh, inflation. What about the VIX? So the VIX is at twenty percent as of yesterday. Um, there has been some some big moves uh, from between eighteen and twenty two percent. What has been interesting is very often. If you look at the, 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 the volatility structure on the day and how it, it is over time, um, by definition, when you get a, a, a macro numbers like the CPI, the PPI, people will be, uh, bid, will be bidding higher um, the volatility, the implied volatility, being, uh, paying more for uh, protection. So that means you're going to have higher protection and higher cost of implied volatility. What happens most of the time is when the numbers comes out, uh, people will be selling volatility, will be selling the implied volatility, and market will go up. So you will see, or if you look about the last four to five days, very often uh, when the numbers goes out, CPI, PPI, volatility gets matched, very true for the CPI, m market goes up. Um, and that is very much the the kind of pattern that we've seen in, in 2017, 2018, uh, where the volatility was much, much, much lower. We are not talking into the 20s, but more in the in the tens, in the low tens. Each time there was volatility going higher, uh, people were smashing the volatility. In terms of the VIX term structure, uh, it's very uh, nothing much to to say about it. So now jumping into the uh, the uh, technical analysis, looking at the S and P. So the, the the trend that we broke uh, at the end of January, we are still above that trend. But what is interesting is is the the short term, or let's say the the one month move that we had recently has been uh, breaking on the way down. So now the what used to be a resistance is no support. So we we can expect the market to go into the 39.50 at least. Um, as long as the economy is not going to get better, and I don't think it's going to get better, I think the the risk are just for the market to go lower. And Nasdaq is the same. We broke some 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 level. Um, Russell is the same. So the charts are more or less all the same. Uh, we broke the 
and the trend that started in in, in 2023, um, early in 2023. So they we gonna have potentially a different market uh, for the next uh, few weeks. Emerging markets still the trend is lower. Uh, China, you know, the whole noise about China is reopening, reopening, reopening. EM is telling you that uh, China is reopening, but not as much as some will expect. What about? Um, SXXP, which stands for the stock 600, which is for Europe, uh, really that has been, uh, I'm trading Europe, I'm trading the US, and uh, Europe is really the uh, the safe haven. Uh, that's really something that um, I, I thought I would never say. Uh, very strong Europe, the DAX is the same. I thought that it will come back a bit. So in terms of positioning, I'm, as I said before, I'm short a bit Europe, and I'm short the S&P, different structure. Uh, Europe will be through futures, and, and the S&P will be uh, through a put spread. CL1, which is for oil, uh, as I've been saying, you know, the, this is this is the range between the 72 and 82, 83. But as you can see, uh, there is more and more uh, let's do a let's do a weekly chart to have a better understanding. Is we have more and more compression into this level. So, um, wh what is the next move up or down? Uh, still a fight between uh, OPEC and 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 the world we're starting. What about? Um, Sorry, copper with HGM1. Uh, same story. We had the big move with China. And now we have been consolidating a chart that I think is, in, is interesting. Something that we discussed just before, which is the XLE, which is for the oil sector versus the S&P. Um, actually, it has been making highs at the end of uh, October, start of November, but since then it has been struggling. So I will be keeping an eye on this one, XLE versus the SPY, because he, he, the um, the relative performance of the oil sector uh, versus the S&P, despite a lot of, 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 of noise and a lot of headlines of share buybacks for companies of good numbers, um, it has been struggling. Your dollar FX, uh, as I've been saying, you know, since 110, um, the, the way I think is, is, is lower for the euro, meaning the US dollar stronger uh, for many reasons, for, uh, uh, for the carry trade, for a bit of risk off. Uh, I think, you know, the, the move that we had from 0.95 to 110 for the euro uh, was based as well on, on, on bad positioning. Google, uh, that is a chart that I'll be really monitoring. This is an important one. On an, uh, so this is the trend that is one of the used to be a market leaders. There is a lot of questions about you know artificial intelligence. So if you do some screening and be looking for ID generation, what is your next trade? I strongly advise you to be looking uh, to be doing a screening on names on artificial intelligence. Not only because there is names, but you know if you believe in in some themes, there will be some big winners. Uh, so do some. Um, ID generation SOX uh, stands for the Philadelphia Semiconductor. So semiconductor, very important. Um, let's go back into a daily chart. Why I'm looking at this one, as we can see here, let me do some, as always, some dodgy technical analysis. So this is up. This is the um, the the consolidation that we had over the last few days. Uh, I think this is one to keep an eye on. Uh, that has been obviously one of the biggest uh, uh, leaders from 2016 to 2022. Uh, now there are questions of, you know, with uh, reshoring, with China, with the world growing, uh, how are we going to do with valuation, obviously. And one of the names that we need to keep an eye, especially because they got the earnings coming and which was a big leader in that space, uh, was NVIDIA. So the NVIDIA numbers are coming on Thursday. So keep an eye on the semiconductor. Finally, Two things, Tesla, why I'm looking at Tesla, because it went up 100%, not only, but you know, if you are looking at zero DTE, if you are looking at the option space, uh, you're going to have two things to be monitoring, the options on the S&P slash the SPY and the options on Tesla that are making, you know, a big chunk of where uh, market participants and retail traders will be, will be playing. It has been a bit strong consolidating over the last five days with some big moves. We are talking 5% moves intraday. Um, and more interest, more importantly, uh, there is this catalyst on the 1st of March uh, with this analyst meeting. Finally, looking at the the Meta, the Amazon, Apple, um, Microsoft, Google, and NVIDIA, uh, Tesla versus the SPY. So since the start of the year, so you remember or you don't, uh, that actually 
all those names which were the leader, let me put a chart uh, that was uh, much longer. Okay, so if we look at, at since 2015, we had this big move and uh, those names were outperforming the market. During COVID, those names went absolutely ballistic. At the end of, of 2021, October, November, like most of those uh, uh, tech names, uh, they, are, uh, they started to underperform. Okay, so as we can see from uh, November last year, November 2021, um, and in 2022, they had a very bad, bad year. And since the start of 2023, Actually, they bounced. Uh, they bounce nicely. Uh, like many risk on risk off, you need to be looking at indicators, and this is one of the indicators that I'm looking at for the time being. For the last ten sessions, we have been consolidating, uh, and that will be a big tell about you know what is the next move in terms of risk on risk off. Um, so uh, build uh, those. Um, tools with uh, trading view for instance that is pretty helpful now let's go back into excel spreadsheet and i'm going to be looking at what has been happening this week so the, the week interestingly as i said um, uh, last saturday was mostly about inflation so we had the cpi on tuesday and the ppi on Thursday. So here we got the, the cpi first reaction we are down but actually very quickly so that would be uh, for the for here, this is for the futures, the S and P futures. Then the volatility was dumped, and the market managed to bounce. Then here we get on uh, Thursday the CP, the PPI same PPI came higher than expected, and we came lower. Then we bounce, and then actually uh, uh, at that time of the day, some Fed speakers say that they were expecting that they wished to have 50 bips at the last FOMC meeting uh, instead of having 25 bips. So what has been happening is the credit market rates have been pricing a more hawkish FOMC. The market started to sell off. And then on Friday, what we have mostly is the ping pong, is the, the shop of the, of the OPEX from the option expiry. Retail sales, interestingly, for the week were better, um, but actually, in a way, it was expected by the, by the Fraser market. Fraser and Grand Puba of Criminal Shorts at the, Prep 19,921 at the Vidro and 13 at Stewart at Viceroy Resort, Texas. Up, um, official. The, 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 mess, the most reason, the main reason, sorry, was um, actually a good weather in, in the US uh, uh, and in Europe. So in the US, uh, retail were pretty good because the people went out and spent a lot of money. But the trend is still the same. So if you look at the, the retail sales, if you look on the Fred website, you will see that we are back to the trend after a bad months of, of, of November and December. That doesn't mean that going forward that the US consumer is doing that well. It's more uh, weather um, adjusted. What was interesting for this week is the S&P 500 intraday pattern, uh, which is more or less if you've been buying on the on the open and selling uh, at the close or selling during the session, you will have been making every single day between 20 and 30 points. OK, so that's for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Thursday and Friday, a bit less for Friday because we had the OPEX. But in other words, as I said before, because of these options, uh, what we have been seeing is people were coming into those days with implied volatility. They were long implied volatility. The implied volatility gets smashed because we, instead of paying, you know, let's say, let's give me a stupid example. Instead of paying a, an 18% implied volatility like the VIX, you'll be paying a 22. Then it gets smashed to 20. The market rallies because the market markets market makers needs to be buying some cash plus you get the options that are kicking in so every single day what you have is up 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 very often when you start to see a trend on an intraday basis and guys like me will be outlining those things over the weekend you can make sure that next week it's not going to be working so but that has been the the zero date to expire expiration that has been the uh, overbid uh, volatility we are still in the earnings season. Earnings season very important. And if you look here, this is for the earnings, looking at how the, the revenues, the net income, the earnings for the S&P have been doing. So this is the trend that we had in 22, 21, 20, 30, uh, in 21, where we did very well. Since then, we have been coming lower. And more importantly, both what has been happening for this uh, earnings season and for the next three earnings season is going to be pretty bad, pretty bad. 
both in terms of revenues, if we look at uh, uh, Q1, Q2, and Q3, uh, where we're going to be flattish at best, and if you look at earnings, they are expected to come down. So my view is still the same. In the long run, if you believe that the S&P um, is correlated to the earnings growth and to the revenue growth, and um, that in the next nine months, there's not much to expect, don't expect the S&P to be very, very strong. What about the catalyst for next week? So coming uh, on th this Monday, the mar US market is closed. So um, we're going to have only four sessions uh, in the, in the um, sorry, on Monday, we're going to have the Canadian inflation. More importantly, on Tuesday, we get the flash PMIs. Uh, so another uh, way of looking at the leading indicator. Another po point that is very important, FOMC uh, minutes, that will be on Wednesday, uh, two hours before the end of the close. So that's going to give us a better understanding of what they have been saying during the last uh, FOMC meeting and what could be uh, some expectations going into the March FOMC meeting. Um, then we're still going to have some earnings. So that is here for the earnings where we get very similar in terms of size 62 companies of the S&P coming with some earnings that represent 8.4% of the market value. Uh, and you're still going to have some big names. So we got Home Depot on Tuesday, Walmart, uh, we got Apache, Nvidia, or Saturday on Wednesday, sorry. And on Thursday, uh, Domino's Pizza and some other names. So still important to be looking at these earnings. Then at the end of the week, important, very important day as well on Friday, where we get to have the PC, which is kind of similar to the CPI. CPI is more the headline and for, let's say, retail trader PC is really the number that is the Fed is looking at. Uh, so it's all about inflation. Um, and as well, on the same day, we're going to have a lot of Fed speakers that will be talking exclusively or mostly about inflation. So the week is, is going to be very much, you know, uh, um, uh, balanced around the so Friday will be a very important day. Um, so be look, uh, be uh, cautious going into the the end of the the week with the FOMC and the the P, the uh, the inflation with the PC. If we look at what the the straddle of the S and P the spy have been pricing, uh, we are pricing a 1.8 percent move for the S and P uh, on, on the week versus a 2.5 for um, the week that just finished. And uh, a week ago, if you remember or not, we were at 1.8. So we are back to the level that we had a week ago because there is not as many uh, drivers in terms of inflation like the CPI and the PPI that the, uh, we had for the week. So I will be looking as well at two things, two charts that I put here. So as I mentioned before, I'll be looking at the SOX index, which is for semiconductors. Again, looking at NVIDIA, which is coming on Wednesday. Um, market is, is, is struggling to find any market leaders, drivers, um, and NVIDIA is very important. NVIDIA had a very strong move uh, over the last uh, six weeks. Um, so that needs a confirmation of not uh, for the market to carry on. Finally, as I said, Tesla, uh, we're going to have a, a, a catalyst uh, pretty soon with the 1st of March, the investor day. Uh, keep in mind that, as I said before, it has been and for the last few years, um, uh, taking a big part of the zero day to, day to expiration, uh, a lot of options, a lot of, of retails. Retail traders have been uh, trading these names. So um, that's going to be very important uh, for the next few weeks. So this is it for me today. Um, if you enjoy what you've seen, uh, please put a like. If you like the, uh, the YouTube channel, please subscribe. Uh, if you want to join the community, we would be very happy to see you. So that's on Discord. This is for free. We get uh, one, two channels for free and and then we're gonna have more channels for people who would like to subscribe to the four by four mentor for series and the mentoring so as always i hope it helps if you get any questions send me an email join the community and uh, be safe and have a good trading uh, for the week bye bye